<laughs> All right. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are just beginning, um, and we're really excited to get started. This is our second Women Warrior in Business Webinar Wednesday. Um, we're focusing on uh, a presentation to really get you energized and going in your business. And um, whew, I'm just I'm just excited. So, <laughs> so um, let me go ahead and get started. So again, welcome. Um, I am Shai Hopkins. I'm from the New Jersey Small Business Development Center's statewide headquarters office, and we are present, we are the New Jersey Small Business Development Center. So the New Jersey Small Business Development Center is part of a national program to assist small and medium-sized businesses in everything towards scaling their businesses and sustaining their businesses and actually growing as well. Um, we are able to help with uh, human resource management, strategic development, you name it. Um, and you can go to our website, New Jersey, I'm sorry, njspdc.com to find out more. We have 12 locations all across the state, and we are very eager to help every single small business owner and manager in the state to uh, revitalize our economy. All right, so um, at no further ado, or with no further ado, I'm going to introduce Stephanie Burroughs. So Stephanie Burroughs is, uh, are there times when you feel fearful and frustrated? Are you suffering information overload and confusion? If you answered yes to either of these questions, you're in the right place. It's time to transform your fear and frustration into confidence and clarity in your life and business by growing your grit muscle. I am pleased to introduce Dr. Stephanie Burroughs, CEO of Stephanie Speaking LLC. Dr. Burroughs provides keynote and inspirational speaking presentations, virtual and in-person workshops, GRIT, which is G-R-I-T, an acronym, and uh, growth coaching and business development coaching services specializing in government and procurement contracting programs, diversity and socioeconomic certification programs, and she has authored a book. So please, please welcome Dr. Stephanie Burns. Greetings, everyone. How are you today? I hope that you're in great spirits and that you're having a great day in your business. You're having a great day on the job. You're having a great day wherever you are. And make sure that you let someone else know the same thing as well. Uh, one thing that Shai missed is that formerly I was the director of procurement programs for the New Jersey Small Business Development Centers. And Shai and I worked very closely together. So I'm really thankful and grateful that she reached out to me to come and speak and to train and to help you with some information that I think is going to make a difference. Not only, in, no, not, I'm not going to say I think. I know it can make a difference in your life and in your business. And that's pretty much all of it, isn't it? <laughs> if you're on a job, you're still in someone's business. It's going to make a difference. But it only makes a difference when you make a change, when you're ready to make a change in you. Because those of us that are in business, oftentimes people are separating themselves. They're like, I'm this way when I'm with the family, and I'm this way when I'm with the business, and I'm this way when I'm with the friends, and I'm this way. You know what I'm saying? I don't know about you, but that sounds like split personality to me. So we're going to talk about how we can grow some grit. And when you grow grit in your life, you're also growing grit for your business as well. You cannot separate the two. So we're talking about four power principles for creating a successful life in business, and this is great. Uh, hold on one second. I understand we're not moving forward, so maybe I can do it. I can't see. Okay, let's see. I may have to do this manually. It was working earlier. 
technology. It's always about the technology, isn't it? No matter what you do, no matter how well you prepare, it's always about the technology. <laughs> and we will work it out. And it was working yep. about a half an hour ago. Yep. It never fails. I see it. Thank you. Good, good, good. You may be wondering why am I talking about grit? I have to share this with you. This has been my life. And it occurred to me about five or six years ago because I've been saying this to people all of the time. When they complain, when the least little thing was getting on their, their nerves and every little thing was bothering them, and I would say, just get a grip and grow some grit. Well, little did I know that there was a higher power pushing me towards speaking on this matter and sharing and training and coaching on this matter. And I turned around to look at what I've been doing with clients that I've worked with for many, many years, over 35 years. And what I found is that I was already doing it, but just not really loud about it as I am today. One of the reasons I'm doing this is to help people to overcome the feeling overwhelmed and to be much more focused in terms of growing their self-confidence, self-awareness, self-esteem, and being willing to just jump into the deep end of the pool. And psychology talks about grit. It says grit in psychology is a positive, non-cognitive trait based on an individual's passion for a particular long-term goal or end state, coupled with a powerful motivation to achieve their respective objective. Almost sounds like a tongue twister. Here's the thing. How many of you have goals? Everyone does, right? In your business, you have goals, right? And you put those goals down in terms of the business plan. So I'm gonna show you how growing grit for yourself parallels to your business taking off. Because one has a direct impact upon the other. You have a direct impact upon what's happening in your business. You can't separate the two if you're the owner. Everything revolves around you. Your energy impacts everyone in your business, anyone that's connected to your business, and anyone that you're going to be working with or perhaps on a contract with. For more than 35 years, I've been helping small minority women, veteran, LGBT, service disabled, veteran owned business, I hope I'm covering all of them, business owners, to be successful in their businesses. And I've worked with the, over a thousand clients and I've put on well over, I've put on well over, I don't know, 200 events and we've had several thousand of attending that. So I think I know what I'm talking about. Don't you shout when I talk about business and helping people to be successful in their businesses? So let's move forward. Our grit is our gift. It's so, it really is. And you already have it. For some that may think and say that you don't, you do. I believe every single person has it. The issue is, are you activating it? And are you activating it knowingly, purposefully? And as I said, there are 16 practices. These are just four principles with 16 practices, things that one must do. We're not going to go through 16 practices today. But I will give you some hints as to what some of them are. And we'll focus on the most important one. But our grit is our gift. If you use these four principles and you practice the, the practices that are necessary, and of course, we would have to do something different for you to get those practices, um, It'll change how you run your business. It'll change how you're organizing your business. It'll help you if you're getting started in your business to get started the right way. It's going to change you and everyone around you is going to feel the change and the impact. And you'll rub off on them. Imagine as you change and you walk into your office, your employees are going to feel that. The vendors you work with, the suppliers you work with are going to feel that there's going to be an impact that has a ripple effect. 
hopefully this is making sense to you. Being, having grit for me is sharing with people how to be grounded, resilient, intentional, tenacious. Next. Next. Go back one. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. This is really important for people who think this whole thing about it, some call it personal development. I don't know. There's other terms. I just picked up a term that resonated with me, made so much sense for me. Soul coaching. <laughs> Someone shared with me. When, you, when people think that really this doesn't have a big impact or it's really not important, listen to this. This is Confucius. Confucius says, he who conquers himself is the mightiest warrior. When we talk about grit, you'll hear the definitions of determination, fortitude, persistence, bravery, courage. Those are definitions. But I'm talking about practices that will make a difference, that will change you, that will shift you, that, it'll, that will empower you. And I say that cautiously because I really believe that every single one of us was already born with the power within us. No one else needs to try and empower you. No one, you don't have to go anywhere to become empowered. You have it. It's in you. It's just a matter of digging deep, finding you, learning who you are, and then activating, doing the work, making a difference. It's not easy. It's not simple. But then, life isn't easy, nor is it simple. And it wasn't meant to be. You see this picture here? This is, this is strength. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. This is strength. Every one of us has strength. Women, I know you have strength. You're going through nine months of pregnancy. Are you kidding me? Pushing out a child and then having to raise them. And it appears, especially today, like they're always there. <laughs> You're always going to be the parent. That takes a lot of strength. And for those of you that I acknowledge and, and respect and honor you that are single parents, wow, double do you have. So you already have the strength. You've done things that you don't think about on a daily basis. You don't remember, or I should say you may not be called regularly, but you're already doing things that makes a difference, that is strength, that is showing the power and the strength that you already have. So let's move on. Next. Being grounded. What does that mean? It means first and foremost, you have to have a strong foundation. Now, this is a construction site, and as you can see, it looks like a lot of steel. Well, they've got concrete and steel, otherwise known in some cases as rebar, and that is to strengthen that foundation. Sometimes it takes longer to create the foundation than the rest of the building going up. I've watched foundations that have taken over a year for them to really get it right before the building really started going up. Because the taller the building, of course, the deeper and stronger the foundation. Well, same holds true for us. Being grounded is our foundation. And so we want to start with a strong foundation. Yes. And what that means is, what are your core values? Having core values, core beliefs, goals. Knowing what it takes for you to grind your way through. I mean, we grind in every other aspect of our lives, but how many of us are really grinding on ourselves? What are we doing for ourselves? I'll give you an example. If you're in college, or you've been in college, or you've been in, it doesn't matter, in school, and you had a big exam coming up, you work eight to faith to pass that exam. You would be up all night long and go into class looking like the cat was just dragged in. But you would have studied the entire night so that you could pass that exam. You were grinding. In your business, you're putting out a contract. You're, you're putting, I'm sorry, you're actually completing an RFP, a request for proposal, or a bid, or a quote. And it has to be due by a certain time on the next day, usually 12 p.m or 2 p.m., not 2.01, not 12.01. It has to be into them. 
You don't want to do it at the last minute. That's just my hand. Never do the last minute because all kinds of things will come up and surprise you. <laughs> However, when you're grinding, you will do what you need to do to get that thing done, to get that quote in, that bid in, that RFP in. Without hesitation, you're going, if you have to drive it to the location, assuming it's within driving distance, you'll get it done. I'm also talking about change, how you go through the change, being cognizant, being aware of what happens to you when something jumps up and there's a change that has to take place. And maybe, you know, it's a surprise. It's not expected. You didn't expect to encounter this change. Something goes awry. Are you prepared? to move with ease through the change. And then there's the growth. How do you measure your growth? Are you thinking about how you're growing? Are you looking at how you're growing? Do you see your growth? Do you see yourself when you make that massive shift? You can see it on the job. You can see it in your business. But are you seeing it in yourself? Listen, this couple right here, that's mom and dad. And that's me in the middle. That's my foundation. They were my core foundation. They helped to create that for me, whether I wanted it or not. <laughs> and most times, what they did to help create that within me, I didn't want. But I respected them. And I feared them. I think it's good to have a little fear. Because that little bit of fear is what really increases the respect. They were the reason that I have such a strong foundation, that I know what my core values are. How many of you know what your core values are? How many of you really take the time out to sit down and write them out? Liken that to your vision for your company and your mission for your company, which are the paramount that you have a vision and a mission because then you move into the plan, the business plan, right? Your core values started when you came into the earth, when you came into being. The moment you came out into the world, up until about five years old, psychologists say, you were downloading every single thing that was happening around you, that you were hearing, that you were seeing, that you were feeling without any filters whatsoever until about the age of five. There were no filters. Can you imagine? So for a lot of people, perhaps those first five years were not in a great place, not necessarily in a space and in an environment where there was nurturing and caring and loving and whatever. Ladies, you know mm -hmm. better than I. Well, if you were in a tumultuous environment, perhaps some of those core values don't work today. Some of those core values are holding you back. Some of those core values may be what's causing you to have fear and the core beliefs. Now, you know your core beliefs. Your beliefs are yours. They're not fact. They're your belief. It's okay to make changes. It's okay to do an evaluation, a self-evaluation. You do that in your business. Hopefully you do. You know, it's okay to change your business plan. It doesn't always have to stay the same. In fact, it shouldn't stay the same. Because as you are growing that business, changes are taking place. If you're monitoring everything against the business plan that you, you wrote, then originally, and your vision and your mission changes as well. As you complete certain goals and you acquire uh, the things that you are, uh, were looking forward to acquiring for your business and in your life, you should have a personal plan. I asked somebody, um, I asked a group recently, how many of you have a, had a personal plan and only two people raised their hand. Again, so much is happening outside of us. And we're so busy looking on the outside and we're bringing in what's happening outside of us. I say it's called an outside in living. And I believe we need to be living more inside out. That means we're doing the work internally. Because when we do the internal work, oh my gosh, you're going to see such a change in what's happening outside of you. You're going to see such a change 
in your business. And I can tell you this from experience. Yeah, I'm the daughter of a Marine. He raised me to be a leader. I was in boot camp for 17 years. That's where my grit came from. That's where it all began. And I'm so thankful and grateful today, but I wasn't for a very long time. <laughs> I'll be honest. But I'm thankful and grateful today because the various different things that I've been able to do over these many years, I would not have been able to do. I would not have been able to overcome some of the challenges that I face. I wouldn't have known what to do. Now, it wasn't only my parents. There was also the creator. So for me, that's where I'm living. And that makes a big difference. And they were they were the ones that did the introduction and kept me grounded in understanding what was for me in the future. Just like in your business, your mistake is about your operations, but your vision is what's in the future, what you're looking forward to in your business. I encourage you to take time out to look at or think about and write down your core values. You may start with one, two, three, maybe have five. And as you think of more, they'll come. One of the things we're not aware of, we're not paying attention to, and I recognize this, is that every single decision we make, every decision is based upon our core values. You make a decision like that, it's happening because that is so well ingrained in you. But was it a good decision? Was it a right decision? Was it a decision that was going to propel you towards the goals that you set for that business or the goals you set perhaps in your, your working life? Being fully present and having consistent awareness. This is what will pull us out of the outside input and more living inside out. I was reading a book just the other day, and I know the gentleman that's the author, and he talked about how first thing we need to do as business owners and entrepreneurs, and I learned this decades ago in a network marketing company I used to be in, and I followed it, and I got out of it. Now I'm getting back into it. And that was get rid of your TV. Get rid of it. You wanna earn, you wanna increase your wealth, you wanna increase your revenue, get rid of the television. It's too much noise. Turn off the screens. I just heard Simon Cowell say last night, uh, I was listening to him talk about, oh no, oh, no, it wasn't last night, it was yesterday afternoon. I heard him talking about having gotten rid of his phone. Yeah. Started out a month, then two months, then three months, six months, but then he got rid of the phone. He's not using it. So people can always find you. They can always find a way to contact you. And it's so true. Can I tell you, I'm not a phone person either. I tell folks in the heartbeat, email first. And if you must, then you text me, but preferably just email me. Get rid of that. Get off the screens. Next. Let some of these screens go. You know, I talked to someone on the elevator as I was walking into the university today, a young lady was on the whole time in the elevator like this and frowning and looking upset. Meanwhile, there are two other people on the elevator when I got on, along with her. They, one of them had this awesome smile on her face. Oh my gosh. I cannot tell you the energy coming off of her was one and I told her this. I said, my gosh, you look like you're so full of joy. And I'm just feeling your energy and it's so absolutely wonderful. Thank you for that. Then it was just me and the lady that was like this. And I, I'm, I'm that person. I just said, look, get off just lift up your head from that phone, please. She says, I can't. I said, yes, you can. She said, no, I can't. See, that's frightening, people. If that's you, hear me on this. That's very frightening when you think that something else, something that is not alive, has that much control over you. That's scary. I come from a time when we didn't have all this stuff. When we had to rotary dial. It took forever for it when you had to dial the zero. <laughs> so I really don't see the urgency and the need. And if what you're looking at is making you 
frown and, and look like you're hurting, then you really need to put that down because here's the thing. You are in control of you. And if you're not, it's time to do that. Because how can you run a successful business if you're not in control of yourself? I'm just saying. Resilience, being ready. Are you prepared? So we, we have all of these plans in our business. We have the business plan. We have the operational plan. We have the financial plan. We have the marketing plan. And I'm sure there's some more plans. That I'm, oh, and then there's the auditing plan. What are you going to do if you're working on a federal government contract and you, you know at some point in time you're going to be auditing? Um, if, or if you're working on a contract that's usually federal funds or if you're working for an agency, a state agency, um, where there's a, they, they have an audit review process and, and, and I've been involved in one of those so I can tell you you better have a plan and you need to have all your documentation but what about your life plan what are you doing for that are you prepared are you ready do you have the resolve do you know how to bounce forward I'm not talking about bouncing back people always use that terminology oh we just have to bounce right back oh no thank you very much I'll never forget when I read John Maxwell he said if you're gonna fall down fall forward because then you get up that many feet ahead. So for me, that means five feet ahead. I'd be, be real happy to be five feet ahead. So no, I don't want to bounce back. I want to bounce forward. And, I'm, and then what are you doing to recover from whatever it is that knocked you out of position? What do you do to recover? Let me, let me share this with you. See these trains? This is two train cars. One train, you got two train cars, and you've got the um, engine in the front. Now that engine is popped up in the back because it's not on the track. These cars, you see some damage here in the windows. This was a train derailment. And there was a huge backhoe. I never saw a backhoe that large before. I didn't even know they made it that large. On the tracks and some workers were tracking. It was um, unfortunately, unfortunately, it was a tragic accident. Workers were on the track working in the backhoe and somehow or another there was a lack of communication. And these windows were taken out by the way back low. Um, there were only a couple of injuries on the plane train, but there was some fatalities on the track. Bottom line is this. I was on that train. When I realized what was happening, when I felt the jarring of the train, it was actually bouncing on the tracks and it took a minute. And depending on where you sat on the train, you had a different experience. That's interesting. But I thought to myself, is this a train derailment happening? Because it was one of those like, this cannot be happening. <laughs> and I thought, is this a train derailment? I believe so. Got the word, download, hit the floor, grab hold of the sh underneath the chairs as hard as you can. Just hit the floor and grab hold and get ready. I was like, okay, I got it. I'm ready. It's up to you. It's out of my, now this is when you're out of control, okay? You don't have any control over what this train is having, but I had control over me. I was prepared. I resolved to be at peace with whatever the outcome was. I had no fear. It was really interesting because when I look back on that, I'm like, wow, check you out, Dr. Burroughs. But as soon as it came to a halt, I bounced right back up and moved forward. I took care of my personal needs, which I should have done before this happened, but I didn't know it was going to happen. <laughs> and then I heard the commotion. I saw the panic in the people. Think about this. What would you do? What would you have done? How would you have reacted or responded? Would you have reacted or would you have responded? See, I believe in response over reaction. But to have response on the reaction means you're, you're in control of your emotions. Now, feelings will come and feelings will go. Feelings are meant to be uh, transitory, fleeting. And everybody's running around today talking about their feelings and they're feeling this and they're feeling that. Let me tell you something. That's holding you back. They're meant to be fleeting. Dr. Joan Rosenberg, no psychologist, says feelings are meant to last 90 seconds. 90 seconds. Yes, what, this, what do we do? We pull an emotion, which is different from the feeling, but they're very close, but they're different. We name the feeling the emotion, and then you drag it along like luggage forever. 
Let it go. You're supposed to just acknowledge, yes, you're there, okay? Not so, not true. Next, let it flow. Let it move on so that you can flow with the universal energy. Bounce forward, people. Stuff's going to happen. Life's going to happen. Craziness is going to happen. Are you ready and prepared in your business? What happens is, let's say you're working with some equipment, a piece of equipment. Oh, I'll say a piece of printing equipment. And suddenly it goes down. And you've got a massive job that you have to get out. What's your backup plan? Do you have one? But if it's in your life, you're shaken, you're taken by something massive that happened, a loss of a loved one, or um, an accident, or an illness, whatever it is that really can jar you and kind of, you know, knock you off of your center. What preparation do you have to work yourself back? To get, listen, my, one of my mentor, trainer, coach, all three, had an accident. They're a speaker. They speak all over the world. For many, <laughs> they would have probably stayed in bed, you know, working on that injury, but not him. He has found a way to continue to travel and to do what he does best. Didn't let the injury stop him. Whenever he has the opportunity to stop, he does what he's supposed to do for that injury. And it is a pretty painful injury and one that will take time to heal. And one that will probably take a very long time. The initial healing will take place. But then there's that, that residual stuff that lasts like forever, depending upon how old you are. But he didn't stop. He just... Look, I, he put it on Facebook. I already know what I'm supposed to do. I'm doing it. And then he put out all the places that he was going to speak. And that required flying here and there. Okay, one right behind the other. Not quitting. Not feeling sorry for oneself. What's your plan? Are you ready? Are you prepared? What are you resolved to do that you will not falter on? You know, sometimes we have to take a moment out. I get that. Things will happen. You don't know why it's happening. You're, if you're aware, if you have consistent self-awareness of who you are and what you're about. I know who I am. I know when something is out of kilter. And the first thing I do is go inward to begin searching for what is that thing that's knocking me out. I just went through something for a few weeks and I couldn't understand what it was. It was really knocking me out. And I couldn't understand what is this. And I was going inward like you don't want to know. I love being with myself. I hope you do too. And I really studied to figure out what it was. And then, then the pain kicked in. And I grinned and, I, you know, they say grin and bear it. Well, I, that's me. I was grinning and bearing it. <laughs> But it was no joke. And I finally went to a healer last night, my healer, and I talked to with her about this. And, and I said, you know, as she worked on me and I found out all the things that were going on that were not correct, and I was like, oh, MG, what is that? And what is that? Not just where the pain was, but in other parts of the body that I had no clue that it was happening there. And I said, I wonder if these things were blocking my energy, my blood flow, and other things, and that was what was causing me this thing that I was under that was holding me back. And she said, by all means, think about this, folks. This is about you, your health. She said, the pain comes well after what was causing it was already apparent. So there were things already going on in me before the pain hit. And those things that were going on and that blockage was also blocking me from doing what I needed to do for me and for my business. This is about being self-aware really being conscious of what's going on with you and then taking some steps and knowing what to do. Now, I knew that I was going to have to see this lady. 
I had no doubt about it, but I had to wait till she got back from Cuba. <laughs> and it wasn't until the pain flared up that I realized I really need to see her. And I got in there, and she's taking care of me, and I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing now in order to continue. But I say that to say I was ready. I was resolved to be in a better state of mind. I was resolved to have my body in the shape I needed to be in for me to do what I do. I say that to say that no matter what, I was bouncing forward. Even through the pain, I was bouncing forward. I say it to say I'm in recovery mode right now, and I'm excited about that. Yes. Intentional. So here's some words for that. I want to just share this with you. Intentional living means making choices for your life based on your greatest values. Back to values again. We're right back to the core. We're right back to the foundation. Not the habits of others. I'm going to read that again. Intentional living. I don't know about you, but let me just share this with you. Years and years and years ago, Shai um, was my assistant, my administrative assistant, but she was way more than that. She was like my right hand, my left hand, my left thigh, my right thigh. I mean, like, really. I was so dependent upon her. And one day, I'll never forget, and I've told the story before, Shine, you probably forgot. You walked into my office out of nowhere. Just walked in. It wasn't part of a conversation or anything. And you said, Stephanie, you're so intentional. You're intentional about everything. What went through me initially was this shock and this thing that said, O-M-G. She saw it. She saw under the lid. That's what I thought. I didn't say anything, but I thought, I was like, oh my gosh, she really saw me. Because I couldn't understand how anyone could live a life without intention. You don't run a business without intention. You don't have your children without intention. You don't take care of them without intention. You don't do anything else outside of you without intention. Why aren't you living your life with intention? And what is that intention? So he says intentional living, it says here on this, this note, intentional living means making choices for your life based on your greatest values, not the habits of others. Again, we're going back to no longer is it living outside in, taking in all the noise, taking in all the nonsense, taking on all the fake news and the, the craziness that's going on. Because when you are grounded, There's nothing that can knock you. You might sway a little bit. You might have to sway, but nothing's gonna knock you down. It's not gonna knock you out. It's not, you may fall. <laughs> Goodness, no, I think of some of my falls. Mm. And some were public. Some were like real falls. <laughs> but, but yeah, she's shy is cracking up that way. One of the things that I do, I, you know, I'm that person that can watch one of those shows where people are doing crazy things and they're falling because when I need a good laugh and I haven't laughed, you know, we need to laugh at least at once a day, every day, at a minimum, but at a maximum, as many times as you can without any ceilings on that. And so if I saw myself going for a bit and I wasn't having a full out belly laugh, something's wrong. So I would go and watch this show and watch all these people fall. Well, I'm the same way with myself. When I would fall down, I would laugh because I knew it looked ridiculous. So it would make me want to laugh. So being intentional means that you have a focus, an aim, a target. If you're, if it's immutable. You plan it. You have choices and you have values. Once again, choices and values. You are not going to move from that intention. It doesn't matter if it takes a long time. It doesn't matter how long it takes. You know, when some of us, are, we have these great visions for our business. We're doing our, our vision boards and you do a vision board for your business. You can do a vision board for your life. You can do a vision board for whatever it is that you put great value in so that you can keep that in front of you and as you work towards it, take that little thing off, take that little piece off and maybe you want to replace it with something new because you've got a, a new goal that you want to achieve. But it doesn't mean it's going to happen all at once. It doesn't mean it's going to happen quickly. It will take time. And in, during that time, the reason why we are actually achieving these goals is because we're growing. But if you you grow intentionally, if you work on yourself intentionally, mm, the 
growth spurt takes place. It happens quickly. It happens without you even realizing it. Let me give you a couple of things to think about. Go to the next one before I go there. This is also a part of intention. Remaining steadfast and committed to your vision. Purposeful in all that you do. Commitment. What is commitment? How many of you are eager to commit to something? Or how many of you step back? Or shy away, or use an excuse like I gotta look, I gotta think about it. I'm gonna do some more research on this. Or oh, there are some of my sisters and brothers that'll say, I gotta pray over it. I'm like, how long you gonna pray? Because <laughs> if you know, like I know, if you have direct communication, you're gonna get an answer quickly. Then take that long. Commitment is doing what you said you would do long after the feeling with which you said it has passed by. So I said I would do something, but by the time it came around to that time to do it, I'm not feeling the same urgency. I'm not feeling the same enthusiasm and excitement, but it doesn't matter. Remember what I said about feelings? We need to let the feelings go so we can flow and get it done. It takes time. If you want to reach your goals and fulfill your potential, become intentional about your personal growth, it will change your life. John Maxwell, one of my favorites. It will change your life. So for those who think it's fluff, oh, excuse me. I read the greats, I follow the greats, I've gone to their workshops, seminars, listened to many of them, and they're great because they're doing what they are teaching. And I know that's the way to go for me. I hope that it is for you. Coming up, it's time for me, I guess. Uh, okay. I wanted to share some things with you. Go to the next. Tenacious is final. Tenacious to be firm, persistent, insistent, determined, steadfast. But these are these are things to be, but how do you get to be all of these things that I'm talking about while I'm a program for that? And it is a if these are practices. These are things we have to do on a regular basis. So am I doing it? Yes, I am. Lord, do. I've been doing it. I've been living it. We wouldn't have had the successes that we had. I wouldn't have had the successes that I've had had I not been living this life. But I'm living it now at a whole nother level. See, it never ends. You never stop. You don't quit. You don't do it for your business. You don't do it for yourself. You don't do it for your children. You don't do it for your family members. You dare not do it for yourself. Put your oxygen mask on first. Remember that. You put your oxygen mask on first. You take care of you. Because when you take care of you, and I'm presuming that everybody that's watching this knows who they are. And if you don't, all the more reason to work this program. But when you take care of you, oh my gosh, you're so much more joyful and peaceful in taking care of others. I'll give you something to do every single morning. I talked about this last week at another uh, with another group and it was called Check In With Yourself. I've written about it, I did a video, it's on my LinkedIn, it's on my Facebook. Check in with yourself every single morning. How many of you do that? You just get in the mirror and Make yourself pretty before you leave or make yourself handsome before you leave or take care of the kids and make sure they're looking right before they're leaving. But are you checking in with yourself? Do a mirror moment, looking in that mirror and asking yourself, who am I? Why am I here? What am I purpose to do? How will I live that out today? How will I impact someone else's life? How am I going to make a difference? How are we going to charge forward in terms of going after some contracts we've been holding back on because we've been fearful about the process. What about getting my certification if it's required, if you're doing business with the government or with public agencies, with organizations that supply diversity programs or with corporations, going after that, getting it done. What's holding you back if you're not? What is the intention I'm going to set for myself? Because I know if I do some of these things, I'll be able to get some work in a different way than what most people are getting it. <laughs> 
there's another way around. There's some opportunities that will be available to me that are not available to me now because I don't have that paperwork done. Oh, is it the paperwork that's holding me back? Do you have your financial plan, your business plan, your marketing plan, your operational plan? Do you have all those things in place and more? Do you have your team in place? What comprises your team? People have said to me, Dr. Stanley, every time I see you, you're, 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 you're by yourself. And I'm like, I, um, no, I have a crew with me right here. It's Jesus, me, myself, and I. <laughs> Best crew I can have. And then I add on to that with the people who support me in all that I do. Who's your team? Who's got your back? Who's rooting for you? I can tell you right now, Shai Hopkins roots for me. There's another thing to being tenacious. Being resolute, persistent, determined, and not giving up, and not making excuses. I think that's the biggest thing for me. You can't make excuses and make money at the same time. So just make it, deter uh, uh, make it an intention. I will not make an excuse. Just do that. And knowing what you want is half the battle, but the trick is to stay tenacious and not let any setback derail you. So I'm going to go back to the story of the train. This shocked me. People traveled from as far as Massachusetts and Maine on this train. We derailed right outside of Philly in another little town. They ended up putting us on these little buses and taking us back to Philadelphia 30th Street Station. But we had a choice. They were setting it up so we could get on other trains to go on to our destination. I could not believe how many people bounced backward and decided to go home. They weren't hurt. They weren't injured. Fear took over, and they decided to go home. Now, I was on a mission. I was going down to do a two-day video shoot for a big project that I was working on for a product that's out. There was nothing stopping me. I, they, I left the day before so I could make sure nothing was going to get in the way of me being there. I was like, I'll be on that next train that's going to get me down there to Melbourne. I was there. I was beat. I was tired because we had to go through some stuff, you know, to get off, the, you know, through the train and getting off the train and the whole and everything. It was a trip. But it was interesting. I ended up on TV. I ended up being caught by Fox 5 and friends and having to give a blow by blow over the phone of what was going on. And I ended up being on Channel 7, doing a Skype. They contacted me through Twitter. Who knew? How did these people get my information? Woo, scary, right? What I'm saying to you is I was prepared. I bounced forward, not backwards. I continued the journey. I would not allow anything, no setback to derail me from getting to that place, which was my goal and fulfilling my intention of doing those two days of videotaping. What would you have done? Finally, let me just give you a gift because I'm taking y'all all over the place. I'm Pulled you in this way, pulled you in that way. So here's something, number one, for you to say every morning before you get up. Someone shared it with me, and i got to tell you, it works. I have so many different things I do to self-empower, self-inspire myself, and to be healthy for myself, and to love myself. I have so many different practices that I do. And I want to just share one of them with you right now. And that is, before you get out of the bed, your feet hit the floor in the morning, just say this out loud. I don't care who else is there. They don't have to understand. Too bad. They need to do it too. Something great is happening to me and through me today. Just say that. Because let me tell you, for me, it works. It doesn't fail. It works. I'm like totally blown away by this. and so thankful to and grateful to the person who shared it. But I, have, I want to give you this free gift. This free gift is a seven-day video series. It's very short. They're like 10 to 12 minutes. Maybe one or two will be a little bit longer, but no more than 15 minutes or so. This is for small business owners. For some of you who have been around for a while, you know this stuff already. But just because you know it doesn't mean you're doing it. That's the key. Are we doing it? I have to do it for myself. I have to remind myself. Don't you remind yourself of things? I know I do. 
So these seven tips are on preparation, <laughs> researching your target market, making the calls. Ooh. I talked to a girlfriend recently, and she's a business owner, and she said, I just hate making the calls. I almost fell out. I was like, funny you should say that, because I did a, a, a quick video on that. Make the calls. Dating Your Business Prospect, the title of my book. Uh, demystifying the Certification Alphabet Soup, The Art of Promoting, Networking, Branding, and Communication, and Who Buys What You Sell. I talk about those things on those videos. It's a free gift. All you have to do is text the word GRIT, because I dare you to use your GRIT to watch these, and to watch them repeatedly, and then to do the work and watch a shift take place. I tell you, when I get on the phone and start making calls, I see things happen. I see things shifting and changing. You just have to be consistent with it. Text the word GRIT, G-R-I-T, to 908-223-8616. 908-223-8616. Now, here's the thing. You're going to get a link coming back to you. So you'll text the word. You'll look for the link to come back to you. And depending on where you are, it may not come back if you're in a building where you can't really get good internet or whatever it is. I've seen that happen. But the minute you walk out, then it'll flood. It'll come in. And then you click the link and fill out the information so it knows where to send the uh, video. In fact, you'll see a welcome video from me. You'll see uh, a video drop same day. And then for the next six days, there's a video drop. And I do a thank you video at the end. In addition to that, got another special for you. Next screen, please. The next special for you is, uh, oh, keep going is my book on sale now for $10. It's also an audio CD for those who like to listen in the car on sale also for $10. And you can purchase your copy by going to my website, www.stephaniespeaking.com, and just click on the tab that says Buy Now. So that's 50% off, by the way. Dating Your Business Prospect, Practical strategies for successful business matchmaker meetings. How many of you are going to matchmaker meetings? How many of you are, uh, if you know what a matchmaker meeting is, and they call them by different names now, but the bottom line is this. If you want to meet the people that have any say in, your, in the contracts that are going out, especially when it comes to uh, corporate or state government or federal government or local government, when they have a matchmaker meeting, you need to be there if the people you want to do business with are going to be there. And again, if you call um, one of the video drops, it's who buys what you sell. And then you need to know how they buy it. So you want to get in front of them, but you got to be prepared before you get in front of them. <laughs> and I wrote this book because I saw so many people were not prepared. And I audited it and I actually did little interviews, many interviews with the, the table hosts from those organizations to find out what they thought about the people that they met with for that day. And that confirmed what I was saying. And then finally, next, for those of you who are NJSBDC clients, if you are looking to do business with the federal government or state government or corporate, I also have a contract here at Buckers for the New Jersey Small Business Development Centers to assist their clients. So if you're a client of theirs, I will assist you. And the easiest way to get in touch with me to find out about, um, to schedule your session, which is done and of course, these are for New Jersey Small Business Development Center clients. That's done by hitting me up at meetme.so, meetme.so forward slash NJSBDC clients. You schedule an appointment. I get that information. Make sure it's going into your calendar. I got to say that. Get it into that calendar. It's supposed to happen automatically. Make sure it goes there. And if it doesn't, if it's going to spam or anything else, put it in your calendar. And then I will send you a Zoom link because I do it all electronically, online, saving time, money, aggregation, frustration, and all that other stuff with you driving somewhere to go meet somebody. We just do it online. I've been working online since about, what, 2006 or 2007? Even when I was at the SBDC running as director of procurement programs, I was doing this online. So now I do it online for my offices. Uh, and for those of you who want to know more about grit growth, how you grow your grit? How you grow that grit muscle? How you gonna pump up that muscle? Ooh, I got a little definition there. Check that out. <laughs> Ooh, what? 
don't know if it's the, t- the, the camera or what, but I'm surprised myself. Wow. I'm growing, people, and I'm growing my grit muscles. So if you want to know more about the grit coaching, you can hit me up. Next one. At uh, meetme.so forward slash, slash Stephanie Speaking LLC. That's not an NJSBDC program. Um, so meetme.so forward slash LL, Stephanie Speaking LLC. Next one. And here are some of my services. For those of you who are not familiar, you can always go to the website. Um, I'm, I'm a speaker. I'm just saying inspirational because that's what everybody else says. I'm like, oh, that's okay. I taught a class for about a month at a, a, a college. And, and I inspire people to want to go do business with the government. So, oh, whew, that says something. I couldn't even believe it myself. They were like, I mean, it was something else. But that's what folks say. So that's why I say inspirational speaker. But the most important thing to me is to see people grow, really grow, not just in the business, but in yourself. Because actually, the business will grow as much as you're growing. Hello. I do workshop facilitations, webinars, virtual training programs. I have some products coming out. Along those lines, grit growth coaching, individual and group sessions, and business coaching specializing in selling to the government and diversity certifications. And that's for anybody that's in any other state around the country. Um, you can connect with me online, and I encourage you to do so. I have some inspirational grit tips coming out on video on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, WordPress blog, and my Gritty Gazette newsletter. Did you get that? Mm-hmm. There you go. So those are the different ways that you can connect with me. And I don't know, I guess if they have questions, they can always contact you, right? Absolutely. Because you have this information. And finally, last but not least, next. Again, oh, if you want to email me. You can email me at navigator at stephaniespeaking.com. If you're emailing me regarding anything to do with the NJSBDC, it'll be NJSBDC at stephaniespeaking.com. And again, some of the stuff you've already seen. Okay, so there we go. That's it. Thank you so much for tolerating me today. I hope you walk away with something that's going to really make a difference in your life. Thank you very, very, very much, Stephanie. And thank you guys so much for sticking tight, or staying put, um, and showing your grit <laughs> for, yes. for the hour. Um, make sure to leave some comments. Um, we're actually a bit out of time. We're just about 2 o'clock. So if you have any questions or anything, feel free to send me an email at shaika.hopkins at rutgers.edu. That's S-H-Y-E-K-A dot Hopkins at rutgers.edu. I will make sure to forward those email or forward those questions over to Stephanie Burroughs so that she would be able to answer them directly. Um, also, make sure to go to our website, njsbdc.com, to uh, see what's coming up next. Again, we have 12 regional centers throughout the state. There is consistent programming, training programs going on all the time. Um, exactly for what it is that you're needing and what it is that you're looking for. So make sure to go there again. It's njsbdc.com. And um, thank you so much. We will see you again um, on, I believe, our next webinar is actually, oh, October is actually going to be a really cool uh, live webinar series because, or live webinar event, because we're actually um, holding it in person at... Uh, Total Wine on Route 4 in River Edge. So go to njsbdc-womenwarriors.weebly.com and look for the webinars and you'll be able to see the information for uh, how to get to the, uh, the next live streamed event that we're holding for Women Warriors, which will be October the 17th. Um, but again, njsbdc.com dash womenwarriors.weebly.com or njsbdc dash womenwarriors.weebly.com. <laughs> All right, thank you so, so much. Um, we really appreciate you staying put, and we will see you again soon. Bye.